greetings good morning it's uh, Fred in Alaska thanks for joining me uh, what I wanted to share with y'all is uh, comes from Jamie but it's uh, it's in regards to her grandma Ruby um, so Jamie reached out to share a story her grandmoms or her grandmother's been telling her since she was little as a warning uh, Ruby is originally from a village on the Yukon River. Um, she, she didn't want to get more specific as, than that, which is, you know, which is fine. So, this, gosh, uh, Ruby is in her mid-80s. And this happened when she was a very little girl. So, we're, we're going back 70-something years, okay? So, keep that in mind. Um things were a lot lot different back then so what happened was uh, they the day before they had processed a bunch of salmon and had it hanging in the smokehouse and one of her elder relatives warned her beware of bears the bears come around when the smokehouses start up and people are cleaning their fish because it's easy meal they want to you know gorge on as much as they can so she she knew about the bear warnings and stuff and uh, when she was real little she had heard about the hairy man stories and to be aware of the whistling in the woods um, and various other things like that so they had a small group of dogs uh, that the family had and one of them was a small little sled dog named Blackie that was Ruby's constant companion uh, you know, everywhere Ruby went, Blackie was sure sure to be there unless Blackie was tied up. Well, the only time they would tie up their dogs is if there was a bunch of people coming and going because the dogs would follow the people home. It, it, it was just how they did things. So she got a brand new uh, cuspuck that she was wearing, and it had a small rabbit-lined uh, hood on it, rabbit fur-lined hood, and she was walking around on some of the trails and just checking for signs of berries and whatnot and seeing you know just little kid stuff and so what she would do for fun is she would sit on Blackie's doghouse which was right backed up against the tree line and she would practice uh, native songs that she heard and she would make her own little 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 native songs uh, kind of like drum dances and whatnot but she would just sing them to herself and, and make them up as she went it was her form of fun and she would do it almost every day well this particular day um, she started doing her songs and Blackie wasn't around and so she figured well Blackie will Blackie will show up eventually and uh, you know be around or whatever because usually Blackie just sat there while she sang well she's doing her thing she's singing she goes you know she's working through a couple different things and as she's doing so she heard movement behind her in the trees and she assumed it was Blackie so she ignored it she had her hood up on her little gust buck and she was just being a happy little kid uh, just not a care in the world you know <clears throat> so as she's sitting there working through her song uh, she notices a very large hand just out of the corner of her eye because she had her hood on and it was kind of you know obscuring her view and this hand grabbed a hold of her hood and was starting to pull it back uh, immediately she's freaked out she couldn't really scream because of how it was pulled it was pulled up against her neck so she wasn't able to get the full screams out uh, she was struggling and she was getting pulled by the gust buck back into the trees and so she lifted her arms and it pulled right off the top of her and uh, took her shirt as well so she's you know a little kid just naked from the the waist up and struggling to sit up and as she's sitting up Blackie shows up and Blackie rushes the hairy man that was trying to drag her away um, Ruby said she turned around in time to see Blackie bite its hand it let go of the gust buck and tried to grab Blackie and Blackie maneuvered around it and 
Blackie was trying to get it to chase Blackie away from her. This thing, she said it was, uh, of course, much larger than her, but it wasn't very much larger than her dad. And, and uh, most native folks, they're not overly tall, so this, this thing was right around in maybe the six foot range. Uh, she said it was pitch black, had a, uh, a black face, uh, very little hair around the face, a big white jaw, um, and was, uh, it, it smelled like fish. It smelled like it had been into fish because she said when the hand grabbed, she got a whiff of a fish on its hand. So as she's looking, again, she, you know, she's a little kid naked from the waist up, basically half turned over onto her stomach and half sitting up. And this thing approached her again to grab a hold of her and Blackie came again, bit its forearm this time. And this thing whipped Blackie around, uh, Blackie let go, uh, ran off. The thing turned and followed Blackie a little ways. Blackie circled back around by her and got between her and it. And she said she was in shock at what she was seeing. And as she was staring into the trees, forgive me, I'm driving, obviously. I, I gotta watch the road. As she's looking into the trees towards this thing, she said when Blackie was sitting there, uh, making eye contact with this thing it was looking back at them and she said it started swaying a little bit and then she heard noise behind her the other dog started yapping and kicking up and all of a sudden when she turned around from looking back real quick this thing was gone and then she looked back again because she heard more noise and it was one of her uncles uh, was there with this rifle and she tried to tell him what happened and you know he's like where's your clothes and you know he saw he saw the evidence of what had happened he just wasn't believing that's what happened uh he thought she took off her clothes and was just being a little kid or something like that you know and, and he's chastising her because that gust buck was just made for her and she was you know crying she goes no i was singing my song and you know she told him what happened you know, this big black hand grabbed my, my hood and, and started pulling and I, you know, I got away and Blackie saved me. And, and he didn't immediately dismiss it. He just kind of was like, uh, you know, something's not adding up kind of thing. And she said, it, she told him it was a hairy man. It was a hairy man, he was right over there. So her uncle takes off uh, into the trees to go look for this hairy man. Well, as he's, as he's heading into the woods he says get your clothes on and you're you know you're ruining your gust buck that was just made or whatever so she's in the middle of getting her clothes on all of a sudden her uncle is back saying get in the house get in the house and so you know she of course she's gonna comply she gets into the house well they get inside and her uncle gets her dad and uh, a neighbor a little ways down the way and goes basically in search of this hairy man because her uncle she heard him talking that it was just past the tree line back on the tundra and it was walking away slowly but he didn't want to chase it along uh, they wanted to run it off and so the group of the neighbor her dad and her uncle take off uh, she said they were gone for for quite a while and uh, one of her aunties was trying to calm her and soothe her because they heard the you know her aunt heard the story and you know with her husband saying it was a hairy man he saw it of course they immediately gave credence to her story and and you know consoled her or whatever and uh, were asking her what happened and, and of course she explained it but uh, they they had hairy man issues she said every every like she she guessed about every fifth year um and she correlated it with the larger salmon run every fifth year uh which i, I haven't had a chance to really look into that i, I know it varies or whatever it's on a, i know they're got to sea for five years and then come back two to three maybe five somewhere along there but uh again i want to thank uh uh, they didn't when when the group went out they didn't find anything uh, 
outside of you know her uncle explaining where he saw it and what have you um, there wasn't a whole lot of hairy man activity that she remembers but she'll never forget that because uh, she stopped making her songs she stopped uh, she didn't stop singing she just stopped doing that part of her little daily routine where she would sit there and just basically make up little songs that you know out of bits and pieces of other traditional songs that she was hearing and, and making them her own which yeah it's kind of sad for a kid um, again thank you Jamie uh, and especially thank you Ruby uh, it, it was really nice talking to you briefly I, I know you're tired and uh, we will catch you guys on the next one thanks for joining me